As the Columbus Day Parade makes its way through the heart of Federal Hill, Frank Caprio lets the other politicians go ahead. He's spending too much time shaking hands to keep up. It's a deliberate strategy Caprio has used since his days in the General Assembly. People want to see you, they want to meet you, they want to speak with you, and uh, there's no event too small or too large, so um, that's what you signed up for. It's what the politicians call retail politics, in a state where voters expect their politicians to be hands-on. And it might not be a shock to see your governor at the grocery store. Somewhere along the way, I, uh, I, I've seen that uh, when you, the more hands you shake along the route, uh, usually the more fruitful the day is. When you're on the other side of that, you have to put yourself in the position of a, of a youngster or a family, you know, they're sitting politely on the side of a parade and someone comes up to them and wants to say hello and extends their hand and say hello and thank them for coming out and people remember that. It's a Saturday afternoon in September, and Caprio arrives to a hero's welcome at this senior apartment complex in West Warwick. Within minutes, he owns the crowd, mixing stories about his grandfather in with a standard pitch on why he wants to be governor. And therein lies the tale of two Frank Caprios. I watched you at that senior center that day. You were talking about your grandfather. Mm -hmm. You had him laughing, and it was almost like, you know, Frank Caprio is a guy I could sit down and have a beer with. Many people said the same thing about Don Kachiri. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why we don't see more of that out on the campaign trail or maybe in, in a more structured environment. Have you heard that? I, I go out and campaign uh, like most candidates do. You know, go to a lot of events, go to parades, go to the... Uh, go to the uh, events in the, in the community, and I do my best to get my message out. I've had people say this to me, Frank's, Frank is such an amiable, personal guy and he, and he interacts, but it's almost as if he's programmed when he gets out on the trail. I, is that a conscious effort or you just kind of go into a default mode in terms of talking about the issues? Now, you know what, we're in the home stretch of this campaign, so, so keep watching, keep watching. We're going to close this deal right now. There's a lot of work to do over the next week or so. On the campaign trail and in debates, Caprio has made job creation a linchpin of his platform and visited dozens of businesses to see what their needs are. Those visits have shaped his message, including his often repeated line about every business creating a job and cutting Rhode Island's unemployment in half. I'm having a small business forum, is what I called my meetings, 10, 15 small business owners. And, uh, and there was a CPA there who runs his own firm, and he gave me that statistic. He said there's about 35,000 small businesses with employees. He said there's another about 90,000 sole proprietorships. So we're not even counting those, just counting the, the businesses with employees. And he said if on average each added one employee over a period of time, you'd cut unemployment in half because there's about 70,000 people out of work. So it's a very straightforward equation. And so when you heard that, did, did that surprise you, those figures? I mean, had you thought about that before? I had never seen it laid out that way. Caprio at times has found himself on the defensive about allegations that his father, Frank Caprio Sr., a municipal court judge and chairman of the Board of Governors for Higher Education, has pulled strings to help friends get jobs. Frank Caprio Jr. chooses his words carefully when he's asked about the influence his father might have on a Governor Caprio. Where is your dad going to fit in and more, not even your dad, but kind of the old school impinging on the new school. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, but there's a clear, uh, you know, a clear way that I've run the treasurer's office and that's the way I'll run the governor's office. Um, the fact that my dad is someone who is well known in the community and has done a lot of public service, you know, I'll let that speak for itself. What role was he playing in this campaign for you as either advisor, father, friend, hands off? Where, where does he fit into your campaign? Yeah, he's a cheerleader. He's, a, you know, he's 73 years old. He, uh, he loves his children and he's there cheering us on. Do you ask him for political advice at all? Well, when I, uh, when I talk to him, it's usually giving him an update on my son's uh, baseball games and, and how that's gone. So, that's usually what we talk about. Then there's the question of a Democrat recapturing the governor's seat after a 16-year drought. After all, Republicans have had the corner office all but four of the last 26 years, despite or maybe because of Democrat domination in the assembly. 
Caprio says the unions know he's not going to be a rubber stamp, and that may be why they have not endorsed him in this race. I'm the type of person that's going to go in the governor's office, and I can work with that legislature, but I, I also can stand up to him. But the more important thing, and this doesn't come up that much, is that when you have a governor who's a Democrat, now the focus of the Democratic Party is a much wider focus that a governor brings to issues. When it's a Speaker of the House and, and the legislative leadership that's leading the, the party, they're, they're looking more at narrow issues that affect uh, their districts or affect uh, people in the legislature. So I think it's a very healthy landscape when you have a Democratic governor looking at the state uh, and the issues that affect the state and then able, being able to execute a plan with the legislature and leading that legislature, and that's what I'm going to do. Why not another term as general treasurer? Well, I, en I enjoyed the job, but you know, here we have an opportunity to run for governor and, and uh, help the small businesses, help the people that are looking for jobs. I mean, I know I'm the best qualified for this job. That's why I'm asking the people to hire me for this job. Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.